Good morning. Welcome to worship this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. Uh, this is a communion Sunday as it is here every Sunday. Uh, so if you've not yet had time to gather your elements, I invite you to do so now. Special word of thanks to our musician to musicians today, Julian Eitenauer, Aaron Sufka, Mara Jonke, and Jana Johnson. And to our technology team, um, Bruce Neubauer, Patty Goak, and Teresa Jones. Um, a few announcements for this day. Uh, we are in search of a technology task force, um, and that would be a, a group of a handful of people to work with us for about three months or so, uh, taking a look at vulnerabilities within our, our computer systems as we have um, an increased footprint um, out there um, with the increase in technology that's been going on and make sure that uh, we're up to date on that and um, also s help us to set policy on what that looks like moving forward. Uh, announcement two, uh, next Sunday, February 6th, we will be having an online service only and it will also be our annual meeting. Um, and that will be at 1045. Uh, there should be a Zoom link that you have received uh, via email, and that will also be in your newsletter, so please take a look at that. Um, there's available um, annual reports online, and then uh, if you do not have a printer and you need us to take care of that for you, please give a call over here and we'll make sure that you get one uh, if that's of interest to you. All right, any other announcements that anyone is aware of at this moment? All right. Uh, we'll now join in our opening song. Song, joy will 
it's now time for our children's message. And uh, I know that we don't have any children here right now, but uh, one of the things that I would like to, uh, to uh, mention and talk about a little bit today is what it's like to see someone that's different than we are. Um, what if someone eats food that's different than what we like or um, that's not familiar? Uh, a totally different culture. Um, the St. Cloud area has many people uh, with diverse backgrounds, uh, many people that come from different parts of the world, and we have an opportunity that's really unique in the fact that we can get to know other people, uh, get to know who they are, uh, try to understand their story, try to understand what makes them different. And that's one of the neat things about this story that uh, we're going to hear about a little bit in the Bible, too, uh, is that Jesus took time to get to know this woman who is different from him, uh, that was, uh, has a different background. Uh, sometimes um, we come into, in, into contact with people or we think that we're not supposed to like people because of whatever reason, maybe it's the color of their skin or some of their beliefs. And, um, but the interesting and amazing part of this whole story is the relationships that can build when we get to know one another. So I invite you to do that um, as you're out and about. And one of the things that you can do too, and the nice thing about this area too, is that we have tons of different restaurants uh, where there are people with different ethnic ethnicities <laughs> from us, where we can get it, have an experience and we can find out more about uh, those experiences uh, the food, the culture that goes along with that. So I invite you to do that as well. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the diversity that you have created in each and every one of us. Help us to remember that you created each of us with different gifts and abilities and that you love each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. who created heavens and the earth, who gives light and breath to the nations, who makes all things new. Amen. Amen. Let us walk into the light of God's presence, confessing our sins before God and one another. Loving and faithful God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, have not lived as your holy, holy people in the world. world. We, we have, have closed our hearts to your love. love. We, we have, have resisted, resisted your light. light. We have, we have failed, failed to proclaim your mercy. Forgive, forgive what, what we have, have done and what we have left undone. Heal us with your abundant grace and help us walk as children of the light. Amen. hear God's word. You are my own, my beloved. We belong to Christ, and through the power of the cross, our sins are forgiven. God is faithful and will strengthen us so that our light may shine before others and that we may be God's holy people in the world. Amen. Amen. Remembering that you are a child of God, please make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Oh, 
Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he, as he had gone through Samaria, so he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was that, say, that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying you have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came, they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking to her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come, see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. 
Do you not say four more months, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you have said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The word of the Lord. That was a really long scripture reading. There are a lot of moving parts in today's gospel reading. After all, it was 42 verses, and a lot happened in those 42 verses. The verses are a story of discipleship and love, a story of going against the grain and breaking through barriers. We see Jesus thirsty and resting at the well while his disciples go into town to get food. We see a woman coming to get water from the well in the middle of the day. We see them engaging in some general but revealing conversation, some theological conversation, some spiritual conversation, We see the building of a relationship, and not just a relationship between Jesus and the woman, but also between Jesus and his disciples, the woman and the townspeople, and the townspeople and Jesus. We see the people who are also willing to allow their lives to be transformed, choosing to set aside their biases and differences choosing to follow Jesus. I want to explore some of the dynamics of those relationships. First, we see that Jesus was in need of the woman's generosity in getting the water. It's interesting, though, because this woman, not only being a female, but she was alone. And on top of that, we learn that she's a Samaritan. The rivalry exists between the Jews and the Samaritans because the Samaritans worshipped more than one God. We additionally learn that she'd been married five times and was living with someone. Now, we don't know the details of those marriages or even the details of the current situation. Excuse me. (coughs) 
We're never told, <clears throat> nor was it ever indicated, that this woman, excuse me, <coughs> we're never told that this woman is a prostitute, although that is what many of us hear sometimes in these stories. There's not language that talks about that. There's not even language that talks about repentance from sin. So it's important to recognize that just in our lives, stories go deeper than what's on the surface. This woman could have been in a Leverite marriage, one of responsibility, where a brother has died, and the brother is responsible to take care of the widow. Jesus recognizes and sees that this woman has gone through more than what's on the surface. He connects with her in a personal way, one that makes a difference, one where he can see the depth of her pain and her hurt and her desires. We don't know the details of those five marriages, but death and divorce could certainly have been a part of the history of her husband's and women could be divorced for any variety of reasons, including not being able to bear children, or if the woman's body was found to have something that was determined by the husband to be a blemish. And for this woman to carry out around such a stigma and to be seen by a man, to be seen by Jesus in a vulnerable way, deepened the relationship that she had with him. We see them continue in this relationship as they have a discussion about living water, of the sustenance that Jesus can and does offer that's beyond just the simple glass of water that he desires to quench his own physical thirst because the living water he offers is that of eternal life. And they further have discussion about where to worship. Jesus reveals that worship will come from those who worship in spirit and in truth. That it's not required to be in a specific place, but it's a state of mind and of being. Shocking, huh? especially since we are not worshiping with one another in person. We're doing this online. We see the additional development of the relationship between Jesus and this woman as she indicates that she believes in the Messiah that is to come. And Jesus says, I am. I am he. Jesus reveals himself to her. He reveals that he is the Messiah. Oh, about 40 years ago, no, maybe 30, I guess 30. I don't want to date myself too much. About 30 years ago, I heard a definition for relationship that seems to hold true in this case and in so many others. A relationship forms when you reveal yourself to someone else or they reveal themselves to you. This is a great example. The relationship with the woman at the well has gone beyond receiving a drink of water to one of understanding, of kindness and compassion, of recognition for Jesus and seeing the woman who was and is and the things that she's gone through. And for the woman to see Jesus not just as a man wanting a drink of water, not just as a prophet, but as the Messiah, as one who could change and transform her life. And he did. He transformed it so much that she didn't take her water jugs back into town with her. He transformed her so much that she, the Samaritan woman, who had been married several times, headed back to her village to share about this Messiah with those around her. 
the people must have recognized this change in her. And I imagine being married five times, that there must have been some kind of change in her that they recognized in order to actually be willing to listen. And listen, they did. And they sought out Jesus to find out if the things that she had said about him were true. They found out that they were. They received confirmation for themselves, deepening their own faith, drawing on that living water that Jesus imparted to the woman and the woman imparted to them. It's also important to note that the disciples were also deepening their relationship with Jesus as well. Jesus is questioned by the disciples and an interesting conversation takes place. They're urging him to eat and he tells them that his food, his sustenance comes from doing the will of God and then encourages them to look around and note the ways that they too can be carrying that out for themselves and bringing about this kingdom. Jesus said the fields are ripe for harvest. In other words, there are people who are ready to hear about the, all that God has done and all that God will do. And that they can start that work right then and there. There are others that have been laboring as well, that have planted seeds, and they can pick up where they left off. we too can participate and partake in the living waters that Jesus has provided. We can gain a sustenance that fills us in ways that can be seen by others, in ways that can make others take notice and want to have what we have. And we can share the living waters with others. And doesn't it make sense? that here at Living Waters Lutheran Church, that we might want to share that with others. Our mission statement is, as followers of Jesus, we seek to reach, teach, and care for God's world as a welcoming and inclusive community. We can share that living water with those around us. And I know that many, many of you do. We can be like the woman at the well, but in preparation for that, I invite you to continually drink that living water for yourself, recognizing that Jesus is the one that can fill you. Kind of like you hear on an airplane when the, the uh, stewards or stewardesses are talking about the mask and making sure that you take care of yourself. So take in that living water for yourself so that you can continually go and share that with others. The woman in the story left her water jugs so that she could share with others. What are some of the things that we need to let go of so we might be able to pick up that cup of living water that Jesus has to offer? Do we need to let go of our prejudices to get to know people? To not put people in categories of us and them? Do we need to let go of our desire to control others in the situation around us? Do we need to let go of our perceived notions of who God is and who's in or who's out when it comes to heaven? Do we need to quit being so legalistic and allow God's love and grace to spill all over the place, to let that living water flow? This scripture reading is a reminder that God's love is for all, for the Jews and the Samaritans who have a similar ancestor in Jacob, whose name the well was named after. The Jews and the Samaritans and the women 
those who've had many husbands. The scripture is for all of them, all who have challenges in their lives, all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, those who thirst for living water, those whose lives are challenging. That's all of us. And it's for all of us to share. Amen. in abundance and because of that we are bold to pray to you today to pray for your church pray for the world for pray and to pray for all that you have made guide us in the ways of faith hope and love we pray that you would cultivate ministries and communities of compassion in this world that would bear witness to your enduring presence among us, to be the light that shines in the darkness, to be a word of hope in the midst of our fears. Teach us to live with humility, curb the arrogance that leads to the destruction of lives, natural resources, disregard for other cultures, disrespect for our futures. Inspire the work of those who are scientists and all who can teach us that we might be able to live in harmony with ourselves, with others, and all that you have made. You, dear God, are the refuge for all who seek hope, who look to freedom, Accompany immigrants, refugees, asylum seekers, the homeless, not only in our community, but in all communities on this earth. Today, especially, we pray that you would embolden leaders to find peaceful solutions to the intense 
tension that is racking the Ukraine area today. Remind us that you are a God of love, that love bears, believes, hopes, endures all things. Comfort with your love those who are lonely, those who are fearful, those who are brokenhearted, Sustain the hope of those who suffer in body and in spirit, especially those who are dealing with COVID, especially those today who are treating and caring in the intensive care units of our hospitals for those who are in need of life, life-saving technologies. Your grace falls upon all of us, Lord young and old, rich and poor. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and this community. Give us a humble heart to follow their leadership. We pray today that you would inspire us with their laughter, with their insight, with their curiosities, their wonderment. We praise you today for those who have gone before us who now see you face to face. We ask that your blessing may be upon the families of Brent Hertz, Joan Peterson, and Maureen Herbst, who have been called into your eternal rest. Abide with us, live with us, be with us in this mortal life, Lord, until we come into the arms of your never-ending love and your eternal rest. We have great hope in your promises, O God. Today, where that hope is dim, rekindle it, nourish it, feed it, so that we may lift to you our prayers in confidence and faith. We ask this in the strong name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. you. I invite you to share the sign of peace with those who are around you. And if you are alone in your home, share the sign of peace anyway, because who knows who may be aware of that peaceful gesture. God's peace be with you all. thankful for your tithes and offerings and the ways that you share your gifts of your time and your talents. We invite you to continue to do so so that God's light may shine in our communities. Let us pray. God of light, our world is a very dark place. Therefore, we offer the gifts of ourselves, our time, and our resources trusting that you will use them to set the world aglow with your loving presence. May our offerings continue to shine brightly before others so that they may see our good works and give glory to you. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. God be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them up, up to God. God. Good and loving God, as, As you, you have blessed us with, with your gifts, gifts let, let them be a blessing for others. May your love be our inspiration, your wisdom our guide, and your truth our light through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
we've all been given the free gift of God's love, and the Lord is the host of this meal. All are welcome, along with your doubts and your fears and your questioning. We'll join in communing together. If you do not yet have a packet or uh, some elements at home, I invite you to grab those now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The Lord be with you. And also and with, with you. you. Let us pray. Ever, Ever faithful, faithful God, God, you have, have taken, taken us again into, into your arms and nourished us as your own. own. Lead us and guide us that we may share our bread and your healing light with those who hunger and thirst through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with mercy and grace. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Now join in our sending hymn. Peace. Be light for the world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.